Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and i uh, got some interesting news for you guys this evening. Uh, here, the Pegida movement uh, has actually got another clash breaking out over in Denmark here. It says clashes erupt as Pegida uh, pro-immigration supporters hold rival rallies in Denmark here. It's, it's a movement that's been growing. We actually covered this ourselves over in Germany. This is, in fact, this is where the Pegida movement uh, actually has originated at, and uh, uh, before I actually go into this broadcast, let me just kind of give you a little bit of a background on the Pegida movement here. Uh, Pegida is pretty much what most people consider to be a very uh, right-wing extremist uh, group there against the Islamization of Europe, but you have to kind of ask yourself the question, is it really so right-winged? Uh, when we first began to cover Pegida in Germany there, I, I actually had a, a uh, Israeli journalist who was visiting in, uh, in uh, Germany there at the time when we were there filming, and uh, he was very much disturbed by the movement, and as he called it, it is a group of hate. But I have seen more and more, though, a coming together of the peoples in Europe there that are trying to stop the Islamization of Europe uh, as far as it being forced upon them. And so therefore, I can kind of understand the, the, the situation that the people are under. Uh, it has become a very serious situation throughout Europe. The crimes that have, uh, that have been increased upon women, the rapes, uh, the murders of women, etc., has really dramatically increased uh, inside of Europe as a result of uh, the huge amount of refugees that have been brought in. And of course, I'm not against uh, you know helping the refugees because we know that there is certainly a major crisis for the refugee community, especially those of Syria that do need to do, that do indeed need help. But we're also dealing with a situation where refugees that have been brought in, a bunch of men that were brought here that we have actually had uh, direct information about from uh, from Holland from friends that we have there that said that speaking to them directly that these men were told to come to Europe, that there were money, there was jobs, uh, there was free money in fact, and that there were plenty of women for them. And so many of them just left their own families back home and came to Europe in search of this freedom that they were supposedly going to get. And of course Germany was the key place to go to. Well who told them all this? I don't really know the answer to that uh, per se, but it has really grown the Pegida movement here. Uh, in this particular, I want to show you just a short clip of this film here, a documentary called The Pegida Anti-Immigration Movement uh, Splits Germany, according to the New York Times here article they did there. Let me just share a little bit of this with you. Ich schätze mal so fünf, fünf Mal auf eine Fälle. Ich bin, also ich bin darüber jetzt aber schon so, also ich bin damit jetzt schon klar gekommen irgendwie und da wird halt ganz viel drüber geredet haben. Aber, <lacht> ähm, ja, das war halt schon schwierig für mich am Anfang, aber jetzt würde ich schon sagen, dass ich halt weiß, dass das normale Leute sind. Oh Mann. You know, it's disturbing. Um in, in this case here, for, uh, of course, over here in Dresden, Germany, here, uh, where this was being filmed at here, uh, a lot of the rallies that are going on there. But you have to understand, the reason it's hard for the Germans is because there was so much anti-Semitism to the Jewish people back uh, in the 40s. And it's become a stigmatism that has been held against the German people for decades. And now the uh, Pegida movement here is, again, once again, looking like a hate movement against the Arabic people. Uh, but I don't think it's so much that it's so much as a hate movement against them, but they are fearful of the Islamization of Europe. I, I, the, the entire Europe has always had its own moral and standards based on Christianity. And now even the Pope of Rome is requiring of the Europeans to uh, for, forsake what they believe is their own core values and embrace the Islamic way of life as part of their way of life. That then opens up a huge can of worms, especially when you're dealing with the fact that um, 
a lot of the Arabic communities want to bring in Sharia law, and Sharia law is very brutal against women, uh, something that just definitely would not be good. Not to mention all, like I said, all the uh, evils that are happening against women in particular, as it is already on a regular basis. So when we begin to look at this right here, and we come back to what happened here in Denmark, again, another uh, protest here has broke out in Denmark, this time the uh, Pegida movement uh, clashing with the police there in their protest of the Islamization of Europe, in, include in Denmark in this case here. So the organization that began in Germany is beginning to gain momentum around other parts of Europe, uh, in this case here in Denmark as well as they're protesting there uh, of what's going on. And you have to understand, we, we don't see it as much in uh, Eastern Europe. We don't have as much of an issue here, but mainly because some of the nations here, like in the case of the Czech Republic, Zaman has been very outspoken about not having uh, Islamization turned into the Czech Republic. Also, Slovakia uh, has outright passed a law recently that they will not allow uh, the Muslim religion to become state religion. Uh, Hungary, another nation that is against the, the refugees uh, coming in and taking over their country. But in Western Europe, it's just the other way around. All these people here are faced uh, with very serious issues and, of course, the police trying to uh, stop the protesters, push them back, and yet we've been there. We've been into Germany and we've seen the places where entire towns have been totally overtaken by uh, Arabic communities. We've seen many places like this, even Turkish flags flying in the entire city and German families fearful for their own lives and having to flee. And many of them, if they have the means, they're actually moving to Hungary, for example. Uh, so it, it's just really become a major issue. And as you can see, the police are not very uh, kind to the uh, protesters. They're being very brutal with them, in fact. And, and, and it's quite a shame there. Uh, you know, instead of the protesters being able to speak their mind, they're being pushed around, shoved around uh, by the, uh, the Danish police. Very, very much uh, intimidating for the protesters, no doubt, uh, as well. Anyway, moving on, guys, into other news here as well here. Let me take you to, um, and before I do, make sure we stop this video footage here so we don't keep getting the sound here. Uh, Germany defense minister calls for pupils without degrees and EU citizenships into the army. That's what he's calling for. German defense minister uh, Ur Ursula von der uh, Leyen has called for those who, who have failed to graduate from school to join the ranks of the military as the army looks to boast personnel and media. Uh, media reports uh, in, enlisting EU citizens also appears to be on the table. Both measures were voiced by an internal presentation by von der Leyen on Thursday, elaborating ways to fill the gaps in the ranks of the military. Uh, Bonoir, which is set to get an enlargement in the coming years, was one of the main points of the meeting. Now, that just kind of lets you know already that the NATO, uh, working with the uh, European partners there under uh, that of uh, President Barack Obama right now, while he's still in office, uh, still pushes forward for a major escalation of a war uh, with Russia. And what well, that is, if he has his ways there. Uh, I don't know how well you guys can see this on your screen. It's not looking very good there. It looks like I'm a little bit too much too bright on my own screen there, so I'll try to get that fixed, guys. It's really set more for the camera, uh, and I'm using a computer monitor right now to film this And while we're in the process of moving the office there. It says, I've already, uh, this is what a friend of ours there says, I've already given uh, to you these information weeks ago, but here is a picture. We have some updates about U.S. deployment. Uh, Fort Carson prepares for biggest deployment to Europe since the Cold War. Uh, and this is some of the pictures right here that he shared there uh, on that, on what Fort Carson is moving around there. And you can just see all the way back, unbelievable amount of more equipment that is actually headed to Europe. Uh, 2017 being loaded on the rail carts, tanks, uh, every kind of equipment you can think of here. 
They're preparing for the military hardware by reason of massive deployment to Europe scheduled for January of 2017, what you're seeing now, all scheduled to be going out uh, next month. As, and it says on here, as he writes in here, uh, a massive deployment that's going to Europe. Guys, I'm just concerned they're getting ready for war here. So the question is going to be, will President-elect uh, Donald Trump take the reins? Which maybe he will. I uh, see if he gets in, I can see a whole new uh, can of worms that could unravel there with the New World Order and that of uh, Pope Francis. But if Obama stays into power, I can see another uh, scenario that might be playing out. Anyway, uh, Guys, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Be sure to tune in to Danoon Institute tomorrow. We'll be doing a special broadcast there. Uh, those of you that would like to tune in, and we'll also be covering other news stories as we uncover those. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.